One hundred days in London. Day four. For love you say. My grand died and left me three hundred a crispy pound. The smell of them, the touch of them, the way the money sounds. I still remember tears of joy. Or maybe it was shock. The most cash I had ever seen. I kept it in a sock. Three hundred crispy banknotes. Even my mum and dad had never had this kind of gift. It almost made me sad. My personal wealth of pennies was three pounds, or maybe four. I kept them in a jam jar behind my bedroom door. I thought to buy a tricycle. My mother said I could. She said, take the time to think it through. So then I wondered if I should. What that kind of money could mean? I could have bought a bike for six of my old classmates and maybe a spare trike. I thought I'd throw a party and spend it with my friends. But birthday came and birthday went and still none of the notes was spent. My parents was my party, like all the other years. The next day I was back in school and facing all my fears. I shared the story with my friends of how my mum had cooked the best and how my dad had dressed the best that very special birthday treat. Though we were short of fish and meat, my best friend really got it. The others didn't care. My money in my sock remained to see in the new year. Or I could save and double it and maybe buy a car. Now I'm grown up with my own home, my granddad's still a star who shines on all my memories of savings and economies, of trading and upgrading, of equity and franchise, of legacy and capital. I know my children have it all. I learned the greatest lessons. I teach it to my sons. You can buy your friends for life, but that's not the one. I still keep that sock. The time discolored stain. The cash is still a bundle. And still, it makes me humble to think my granddad from the grave and mom and dad who joined him next invested all they had in me so I could feel, so I could see the love you wish away may return around the way. But for the patient and the brave, there's nothing like the love you see.